Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Last week, NVIDIA released more information about the RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti. So the question really is, are these GPUs good for LLMs and generative AI? However, there are legitimate questions as to whether or not these cards are actually good for gaming when you compare them to the previous generation of NVIDIA GPUs, specifically the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. Now, of course, NVIDIA is happy to have a new sort of mid to entry level generation of GPUs that are also built on the four nanometer process they've been working on so long to get right for cards like the 4070, the 4080, and the 4090, and maybe the 4090 Ti, but we'll have to wait and see what that looks like and subscribe if you wanna see our upcoming video about what the 4090 Ti might look like. But specifically, they've made some very strategic decisions. And I think we can look back over the past two to three years to understand where some of these decisions might be coming from. The first are decisions to make sure that people are using NVIDIA GPUs of a class that NVIDIA decides for the things NVIDIA wants you to use them for. And in the past, NVIDIA has tried to make sure that people can't use GeForce cards for this kind of compute. So these are our these are our uh, CPU machines. We have three racks that look like that. Um, two petabytes of spinning disks. Um, where are our 3080s? Our 3080s are in only uh, desktop computers for non-business purposes. Right. These are our GPU machines. What's in there? Uh, V100s. Uh. All right. <laughs> So for instance, they say in the drivers, you, know, you can't run these in a server. Or they say, you know, you can only use the NVENC encoder for one live stream and not any more than two, when in the RTX A5000, which is basically identical to the RTX 3080, you can do the same thing, but you can have 30 of them. And I think a similar thing might be going on to what NVIDIA did in terms of mining mitigations, in terms of mitigations that make gaming as good as possible, but limit what you can do with the low end in, in terms of LLMs and AI, because as we've seen, NVIDIA is optimizing for AI in all of their GPUs. Uh, this is where most of their profit is coming from, and it's why seemingly there's been a little bit less of a focus on gaming. So NVIDIA predictably has decided to make the lower to entry end of their new GPUs more about gaming, and they've gone about this in kind of a snarky way. So what I mean by this is the biggest focus NVIDIA's had in terms of making these new GPUs good for gaming, even if the benchmarks don't really show that, is optimizing for what they're calling the future of AI gaming, which for those of you who don't know, is a feature called DLSS. DLSS is basically a feature that uses AI to predictively generate new frames based on the geometry and effects of past frames. It's this process we've seen used in some of the more advanced AI tools we've looked at, which approach more mimicry than perfect recreation in terms of ray tracing. The idea is that with this frame generation technology, you can significantly increase a system's performance by mitigating most of the workload that would have been handled in traditional ray tracing or traditional path tracing. DLSS 3 is the latest version of this, which you can only get on the 4000 series of GPUs. And what's wild is NVIDIA claims that with DLSS 3, this new AI engine is reconstructing and actually rendering up to seven eighths of all the frames you're seeing on your screen. So basically this means that um, where there's frame generation, uh, there's more information stored in L2 cache than VRAM, which in theory technically would lead to a better gaming performance, you would think. Now, what this means in hardware changes. So if we first look at the 4060, Basically what you see compared to the RTX 3060 and the RTX 2060 is that it adds a little bit of performance by not that much. So if we look at shaders, we have 15 teraflops compared to 13 in the 3060. In terms of RT cores, we have 35 teraflops compared to 25 teraflops. And in terms of tensor cores, which you think would directly correlate to AI performance, you actually have almost double, so you have 242 teraflops as compared to 102 teraflops. However, the trade-off NVIDIA has made here is having more L2 cache right on the GPU and actually reducing the amount of VRAM and slowing down the bandwidth that is available between the GPU and VRAM itself. And the change here is quite drastic. It is quite frankly halved. The new memory bus in the RTX 4060 and in the RTX 4060 Ti is only 128 bit as compared to in, at the 3060 uh, and the 3060 Ti, it is 256 bit. So that means regardless of how fast the memory is running or what kind of memory it is, 
you have a pipe that is half the size to pipe data from the GPU to RAM. And if you've done LLM stuff or you've messed around with stable diffusion, you'll know that the amount of time you wait for information to be loaded into VRAM, the amount of VRAM and how quickly the GPU can talk to VRAM is immensely important to, first off, just being capable of doing anything and in terms of how long you wait to get results. So although uh, the 4060 and 4060 Ti have eight times as much L2 cache and are in theory, you know, a little bit more power efficient because of the four nanometer process used to produce these GPUs, they're actually not as good for AI, objectively. I mean, you, even without significant benchmarking, looking at, these, looking at these stats, it's really clear that if you wanna spend the money, sure, but the odds that you'd get even maybe a 15 to 5% performance gain is quite low. And what's also kind of insane is the 4060 and 4060 Ti actually have a lower number of CUDA cores than the 3060 and 3060 Ti. So what should you do? And let's say you don't wanna buy this, what should you do instead? Kind of change. But for instance, looking at the lowest end of card you need to run stable diffusion locally, in a enjoyable way. They say plenty of people are using 12 gigabyte RTX 3060s and using that to generate four simultaneous 512 by 512 pixels image, pixel images in a matter of seconds. Even the cheaper and recently released 12 gigabyte RTX 2060 could be a good pick, although the 2060 is a generation behind and is less efficient in terms of electricity consumption, if that's what you're worried about. Of course, with more RAM, you get higher resolution images, but plenty of people still, but plenty of people just generate 512 by 512 and then use other AI tools like uh, real ESR GAN to upscale, which is still totally possible on the 2060 and 3060. So generally, you know, more VRAM is better, but still, and I'm not the only one saying this, I think the best card for the money is the NVIDIA RTX 3060 with 12 gigs of RAM. 3060 Ti, the 3060 Ti gives you a little bit of a performance bump, but I'm not sure it's actually worth the money. So now the question is, what does that actually cost? So let's look at what you can actually do on eBay right now. So as of today, July 3rd, uh, I'm only looking at sold listings because these reflect you know, what the market is actually fetching for GPUs nowadays. And this is kind of incredible. So of course, you know, there's the chance that these cards may have been used for mining. Uh, ironically, all of the 3090s I've purchased were used for Ethereum mining and they've been entirely fine for doing AI things. So I wouldn't let that be an issue as long as you're buying um, EVGA or ASUS cards, um, gigabyte cards I would maybe stay away from. But again, this is pretty wild. So consistently, uh, you can see that for working, so consistently you can see that 3060 so consistently you can see that uh, 3060 12 gig cards are going for anywhere between kind of the low 200s to you know mid kind of 250 range and I think this is quite cool. Some people might say don't buy EVGA because they don't do GPUs anymore. I disagree because all of my 3090s are EVGA cards and they've been absolutely wonderful and I actually recently warranted one of them and I had no issue. So yeah, depending on what you're doing here, I would say the 3060 or even you know a 3060 Ti is a fantastic option if you go on eBay. And eBay also has fantastic buyer protection. I bought a number of GPUs here and I can't recommend it enough. So let me know what you think. Um, if you're looking for an entry level GPU for generative AI, honestly, right now, your money could not be better spent on an RTX 3060. It's a really interesting niche because this is less money than I think you would spend if you were renting a GPU, like on the cloud. And again, you can run this as much as you want and you might be a little bit limited for the initial version of an image you're generating on Stable Diffusion. However, um, again, if you use something like ESR GAN, you can just upscale whenever you want and you're really not losing out on much performance or much of the experience with these cards. Now for text to video stuff, things like that, these are going to struggle a bit. But if you're just doing images and fine tuning and that kind of thing, this is a wonderful way to start messing around with, with generative AI and actually still having you know, a pretty good gaming experience if that's what you want to do. So let me know, um, are you gonna consider getting the 4060? Do you think the 4060 Ti makes sense? Uh, do you think Nvidia has 
some kind of a strategy here to make these cards only good for gaming and bad for LLM stuff because NVIDIA makes all their money from AI stuff now. Let me know what you think. Uh, again, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. As always, I hope you learned something and stay tuned for our video on the RTX 4090 Ti, which will hopefully be released soon.